Hello and welcome to the Young Folk Knits Knitting Podcast. Instagram at youngfolk.knits and those are the mainly the two places that I'm at so feel free to connect with me on those platforms. This is the first knitting podcast that I've ever attempted to do and I just really enjoy watching knitting podcasts. I love seeing other makers show their um, what they're working on their yarns, what's inspiring them. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from podcasts and I love seeing, I love the feeling like I'm sitting in their living room with them, drinking hot tea and chatting about what they are making. I do have a few friends that knit, but um, I really enjoy at night after I've put my children to bed to be able to feel um, like I'm getting that in while I'm watching a podcast. So I hope you enjoy this and maybe, uh, Maybe you'll feel like we're chatting about our knitting as well. So a few things about me that are non-knitting related. I live in Arkansas with my husband and our children, our dog, our chickens. We live on a small little farm, um, the Ozark Foothills. And we uh, also are beekeepers, so we have beehives that we are raising and um, we're trying to split those hives. We are going to be selling some bee colonies as well as honey soon. You can find us on Instagram at Honey Folk Bee Farm if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, I also like to play the piano and photography is another passion as well. Before I had my last child, I was a um, registered respiratory therapist at a local hospital, and I really enjoyed doing that. But I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, and I wasn't really able to continue that at the time. Um, I have kept up my credentials and license, so maybe I'll return to that in the near future. But right now, I'm enjoying homeschooling my children and knitting and uh, taking care of the animals here. So, first of all, I was gonna show you a few things that I have made recently. I know this is the first episode, so you haven't you know, seen some of my in progress, but these were all finished fairly, fairly recently. This is a sweater, um, or camisole uh, by My Favorite Knit Things. It's called My Favorite, or I'm sorry, it's called the Camisole Number no. Five, and I knit it with Autumn and Indigo um, Merino Bamboo. It's a new yarn they have, fingering weight yarn, and I used to color Overcast. To me, this was the perfect yarn for this project. I love it. It's not as hot as wool alone. And in the South, that's important. <laughs> so I really love it, the, the fabric that it created. Um, this was an addictive knit and I knitted it literally the day it came out. So I was, I mean, I began, I started knitting it. I didn't finish it that day, <laughs> but I love it. I love the double knit neckline and armholes. I think it just adds such a finished look and I I cannot say enough good things about this. 
I did knit the largest size. Um, I did not want, it's an XXL. I did not want the ribbing to look stretched at all. And, um, and I, I mean, I do think this looks good to be a fitted top, but I don't want, I didn't want the ribbing to look stretched in any areas, especially my chest. <laughs> so, um, I think it turned out really well. I'm very pleased with it and I think it will get a lot of wear. Okay, another summer piece that I finished not too long ago is this Knitting for Olive Camisole number four. So I knit it next. And I used the Pure Silk by Knitting for Olive. I think the fabric that it made was really nice too. I love the silk. It just, it definitely has a completely different feel to it than wool. Um, when you're working with it, it's not as fun to knit with for sure. I definitely prefer a springy wool. <laughs> um, you know, a non super wash springy wool is my favorite for my hands, but this worked up really well. And I did the double stitch to weave in my ends especially here in the center where it comes together. I think that's important because it's very visible. You've got multiple yarns, you know, that need to be woven in. I think that worked out the best for me. And I like the back a lot. It's dropped down with some smaller triangles in the back. And I'm just really pleased with it. It, it grew so much after I blocked it, which is okay because this is one I definitely wanted to not be tight or fitted. And I'm very pleased with, with how it came out. The straps are a bit long, but I can always adjust it if I need to. And I kind of like the way, uh, the way it turned out. So I will wear this probably under a cardigan or a blazer. But another 10 out of 10 <laughs> for me. One thing I was going to mention is that with the straps, they're awkward. They're knitted awkward. And so, you know, it recommends the, um, double-pointed needles. I don't really have double-pointed needles um, in heart in very many sizes at all. So I just use just a circular needle and I would just, you know, pull it back through to the beginning and start over again and then just pull it back through. So the circular needle worked just fine for me um, instead of using double-pointed needles for that I cord. Okay, another one I finished recently is this ranunculus sweater and it is a pattern by Knit Cafe Midori I believe is what it is on Instagram and I love this so much I made it out of little fox yarn um, I want to say linea it's a DK weight yarn with wool linen maybe silk. I need to look at the contents again, but, um, I made this oversized with a, you know, a fairly open, um, fabric, but it's not that see-through. Um, but I mainly wear this over dresses. I've worn it over a dress so far and I really like it. It does have, so this is the front and this is the back. It does have more fabric, um, with short row shaping in the back. But I did a tubular bind off for the bottom hem and the sleeves and I did a German twisted cast on instead of a provisional cast on for the um, neck ribbing and I liked the way that turned out better because I tried both. Okay so that's, oh, I was wearing this earlier so I'll just go ahead and show it to you but um, I made this a while back. This was my Vertices Unite. Um, it's still pretty really warm during the day here in Arkansas um, in the mornings and evenings get cooler which is nice but oh, during the day it's very humid <laughs> this I made out of magpie fibers for all of the yarn except this one which is the blue here the striping is Woolberry Fiber Co um, cashmere cashmerino in summit and the rest are all swanky sock from magpie fibers and i love this so much the colors are just 
my favorite. <laughs> so I get, I wear this a lot, a lot. And I also did a, did I put that? Test knit for, on Instagram, her name is Rachel, Rachel Knits, or it's Rachel's Knits. Um, I'll link it below. But this is the Cleo cardigan. And the pattern calls for mohair held double, but I am sadly allergic to mohair. So I knit this in Surrey held double. And I used Farmer Solar Fibers and the, her Odang base in Dumplin' and Desert Rose. And I, it is a denser fabric than mohair, but I was still able to get gauge. It's just, it is denser than mohair yarn I have found in Surrey. Um, so it did come out a little, I, I did have to be careful um, because my uh, swatch, if I blocked it very aggressively, it was a bigger gauge, but um, I really was happy with the fabric. It, it's got this beautiful lateral braid um, detailing, and I also did a tubular bind off for the hem and sleeves. They have this beautiful balloon sleeves, and The tubular bind off or a sewn bind off is my favorite, but it is a beast for a sweater because you have to get enough yarn to go around the circumference. What is it? Something like three to four times. So you are working with a lot of yarn <laughs> that you are sewing with and, um, which is not fun with Surrey, <laughs> but the result is just so good. It's worth it. And another thing I love about this sweater, you don't have to pick up for the neckband. I hate picking up stitches. I'll do it, but I don't like it. <laughs> and the shaping is just really nice. This is gonna get worn quite a bit. I like that one. Thank you for letting me test, Rachel, if you watch this. <laughs> okay, so that's all my finished objects for now. I'll show you what I'm working on. I got this in my in one of my woolly bean bags. Um, Juanita is a friend of mine in real life. She's also from Arkansas, and I've known her since we were uh, young. <laughs> and she makes the most beautiful bag, project bags, or you could use them for anything really. They have great pockets, beautiful prints. Um, so you can find her on Instagram. But I am making this fern sweater, or brunya. I have to look up again how to say that in Danish. If you can't find it under fern sweater, you can find it under brunya, brunya. <laughs> um, but this is a Knitting for Olive pattern and I'm using Knitting for Olive Merino with a Cumulus Fiber Spate, a Cumulus by Fiber Spates yarn uh, in the color Rust. And so I'll tell you, I have a love-hate relationship with this sweater. Um, it's going to be a very warm sweater, that's for sure, so I won't be able to wear it for a while. But the, the Cumulus has a gold thread, a silk thread running through it that the Surrey is, um, you know, uh, spun with, I guess. And if the sun is not shining on it, I love it. When the sun shines just right on it, it almost looks like a gold glittery thread running through it, and I hate that. <laughs> and I feel like... It almost cheapens it a little bit, but um, but I still love it. And when, especially when the sun is not shining on it, I really love it. But I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be really nice. It's very soft, but it is gonna be very warm with that <laughs> Surrey held with the merino wool. Um, I had made it all the way to split for the body and sleeves, and I realized I had made a, a mistake in the increases I had put one set in the wrong spot and because there's an all over lace pattern it completely messed up the lace pattern. I tried to fix it and I couldn't in a way that I would be able to live with so I ripped it back and if you've ever knit with Surrey it is no joke uh, ripping out Surrey <laughs> yarn. It's very toothy and sticky and that has been a job so 
I have, I'm still uh, ripping back, I think, one more row, uh, but I'm just winding it up in this little ball as I go, and then it will be back to the two balls, but um, that was painful. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get to back to where I was within a day or so. It wasn't, it wasn't too long because the, um, the yarn tail double make it a nice and thick DK, so it works up really quickly, I feel like. Uh, following along with the summer tops, I have also got uh, another woolly bean bag here. I've also got this um, Tanya sweater that I'm making out of Farmer's Daughter Fibers, uh, Foxy Lady in the color One Stab. And, oh, I love this yarn. It is so soft and heavenly. But, um, I am a lace knitter. Oh, it's lost some stitches there. I love lace. I feel like I could knit lace faster than I can stockinette. Uh, it's very intuitive and it feels, it's my favorite. Uh, it's very engaging, but I also, I can knit lace easier. Um, almost watching, you know, a movie or, or listening to an audiobook. I don't have to pay that much attention to lace, but I, you know, I hate color work. <laughs> I do it a lot, but I have to pay much more attention. Okay, so I finished the lace and now I'm on the stockinette and I just kind of been stuck here because I get so bored of the stockinette. It's hard for me to keep at it, especially on size. US three needles. Um, what millimeter is that? I can't even remember. Fingering weight. I mean, it's tons and tons of stockinette. So, it has been languishing, but I have picked it back up because I've decided I think I want to do a three quarter length sleeve or like a long elbow, uh, right past my elbow sleeve for fall. So I want to hurry up and get that done. So that has gotten back out. I also have this pro, or wait, 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 this project, which is in a bag that I actually made. Well, it's a little simple knitting bag. I made some socks, Emily's favorite. Uh, she has Viola Yarn Company. Um, and is she, the Emily's favorite socks. I I left it in the other room. I have one finished sock. <laughs> and then here is the ribbing for the next one. But I'm using this Hedgehog Fibers sock yarn in uh, clay and kelp. And then I have got, this was some um, scrap yarn I have, and I'm pretty sure that it's Cedar House Yarns in the colorway ink. I don't have the ball band anymore, but I feel almost positive that's what this is. So I'm using this just as one stripe, just for one stripe as a little accent um, on the leg. And hopefully I'll have, the, this sock is really quick. I think it'll go, I can get this done this week. So hopefully I'll have that pair to show you next time. That is a wonderful pattern. It's a three by one ribbed sock and it's one of the best fitting socks. I highly recommend that pattern if you're looking for something a little bit different um, with a ribbed sock, but a great fit. Okay, another woolly bean bag. <laughs> this is the Iris hat by Sari Norland and I have not really done very many top down hats. I don't like them. I like bottom up hats, which is funny because I hate bottom up sweaters. <laughs> I hate them. I feel like the fit is always so much better for me in a circular yoke top down sweater that I can try on as I go because I'm pretty tall and I have a really large chest and I've got to try on the sweater because my chest makes a big difference in the length of the sweater and how it fits, especially if it doesn't have short rows or bust arts. So anyway, back to this hat. I'm working on this Iris hat by Sorry Norland and I really like, it's gonna be thick and warm. I'm holding together um, Hedgehog Fiber Singles in the colorway clay. And she actually, so the pat original pattern I think had a strand of fingering weight held with a strand of mohair maybe. 
but this she also has instructions for how to do two fingering weights held together and it is a very thick fabric but I really like the ribbing and it, it has created a kind of fun little pattern at the top and uh, you, it's got that magic loop so you can just pull it and cinch it since cinch, cinch the hole shut so um, I'm gonna try this has been languishing as well but I'm gonna try to get this finished up so I can start wearing it now that the um, mornings and evenings are cool here in Arkansas mm -hmm. really currently I've got a few others that I have not worked on in a long time <laughs> but this is something I'm about to cast on okay this is some yarn I've recently got this is a being held in a bag that I sewed out of waxed canvas and cotton that I got from Stone Mountain and Daughters fabric company or fabric store I ordered online and the pattern is from I believe her name is Noodlehead on Instagram um, I'll have to put it down in the bottom, but this is yarn. Oh, isn't it beautiful from Lionhead Knits? Oh, some of my favorite colors. I don't know how her sock yarn is so soft, but it is amazing. Okay. So this is Yellowstone over here. This is vintage flannel plaid. Van Zant and Ocker, Ocker, maybe. Anyway, um, Colleen from Little Lion Head Knits has been making a shawl with this yarn by Stephen West. Um, I believe the shawl is called Exploration Station, and I love the fact the way it knits up the fabric. However, I do not like in the design the lace at the bottom of the shawl. I don't know. It's just. It's not my favorite, so I wasn't sure that I wanted to make that pattern, and I have been scouring Ravelry, looking for more of a triangle or a, you know, a square or rectangle folded over that will turn into a triangle that has brioche and stripes and a few garter sections, but I cannot find any that really work great with the four colors. So I'm back to Exploration Station. Uh, but I think if I do that pattern, the reason I haven't cast on yet is because I've still been trying to decide for sure on the pattern. I think if I do that pattern, I will not do the lace. I will maybe do a garter band or, or ribbing or some, something different uh, for, the, for the edging of that shawl. If you know of a shawl that would work well, let me know <laughs> instead of that one. So I also got this from Lamco Yarns. This is a DK, her DK weight yarn. And oh my goodness, I love this color. My daughter is obsessed with red. Her shoes have to be red. Everything has to be red. <laughs> uh, red all the time. And I, someone I follow on Instagram, Simply Sarah Knits, she knit her husband a sweater out of this color in fingering weight yarn. And when I saw it, I showed it to my daughter and she was like, yes, that's the color. So I am going to make a petite knit sweater, the teddy bear sweater for her out of that yarn because I think it's such a classic good fit, but I'm not going to do that embroidery on the front. Um, I think it will, I think it will look, look best for what I'm wanting to do with just a plain classic sweater that she'll be able to wear for quite a while, hopefully. <laughs> Wixton unfolding jackets that I love so much. I hate to show y'all because the pattern is no longer available to buy. <laughs> so I've had a lot of people contact me really frustrated they couldn't find the pattern. But there is a new pattern that has been released by Megan Nielsen and it is a quilted jacket or you can make it at from, you know, a quilt. It's a jacket that can be quilted or different fabric, but I love it. It's beautiful. I think it's a great pattern. It's very similar to this one. I will uh, put the name of it down below um, so that you can look at it if you are trying to find a jacket 
similar. But this is out of Merchant and Mills. They're quilted jacquard fabric. And then just a cotton um, that I had some extra of I used for the inside. I love the shawl collar. I love, it's so oversized. Just wrap up in like a blanket. I love the pockets. I'm just really pleased with how this um, fits. I wanted a big oversized comfy quilted jacket coat for this fall and winter. And I think this is going to be worn daily. <laughs> we don't like to run our heat really high in the house. We keep it pretty cool. So I like wearing a sweater or a light jacket in the winter time in the house. That way we don't have to run the heat as high. So I love it so much. I also made <laughs> one out of linen. So this one is completely linen. The, the um, outside and the inside lining. This is also from Merchant Mills. Um, my favorite though is the fabric on the lining. It is dr the drape, the softness, it's like butter. I think it would make a beautiful dress or top, a really pretty top. And I have a lot of fabric left over because it's so wide that I may try to make a strata top by um, So Liberated out of the extra. Uh, but it, I think it might be a little see-through. So I'll have to see if I can line it or wear a camisole underneath it. But I really like that fabric. I also have this from Blackbird Fabrics. So soft and drapey as well that I am going to make a estuary skirt out of. I got my pattern printed at Pattern Z. <laughs> but uh, um, I have one estuary, estuary skirt already and I love it. And I think this, it's so flowy. It's going to be a very nice fit and I think it will be perfect with this sweater. looks good together. So that is my goal for um, an outfit to be finished soon. Also have this that is going, it's from Merchant and Mills Linen. Um, I believe the colorway is Souk. That's how you say it. But this is going, this is going to be an orchard dress. So I'm excited to have that to wear. I think it would be a great dress to wear fall, winter, spring, summer, all the time. And lastly, I have this uh, fabric that I've had for a bit from Merchant Mills, but I can't decide on the dress I want to make with it. I don't know if I want to do a hinterland dress or a Florence dress, which is a pattern by um, Merchant Mills. The hinterland dress is a pattern by So Liberated. So, I'm still trying to decide on that, but I think it, I want to get it done quickly <laughs> because I think it will be a beautiful staple piece, especially to wear underneath my sweaters. All right. I think that's actually everything. And yeah, I think I've covered it all. So hopefully you, you enjoyed chatting about knitwear with me, um, a little bit of sewing. And if you do, then like and subscribe and Hopefully, I'll be able to start posting a few more podcast videos. Um, I love watching all of the other podcast videos and getting inspiration from them and um, just feeling like I'm getting to have a, a nice little conversation about something that I love. So, I hope you've enjoyed it too and I will see y'all next time. <laughs>
Thank you.